Hi friends and new friends out there in Dash Nation. I'm Christopher Carruthers, also known as Tao of Satoshi, and you're watching Cash Alternative TV. Well, as we know, Latin America is a region that could really benefit from Dash as a digital cash. About a year ago, I interviewed Eugenia Alcala from Dash Venezuela, and I was very impressed at the work that they were doing down there to bring Dash to the people. And right now, there's another group, this time based out of Colombia, who's also doing a good job at bringing Dash to the masses and creating new merchants and creating new transactions every day. This group is called Dash Latam, and today I speak with its leader, George Donnelly. He gives me the de details of what he's been able to accomplish this far, and what he's doing now, and what his plans are in the future. Hope you enjoy this interview. Here we go. Welcome to Cash Alternative TV. I'm uh, Christopher Carruthers, also known as Tao Satoshi. And uh, with me, I have the coordinator for Dash Latam. His uh, name is George Donnelly. Welcome to the show, George. Thanks, Tao. Great to be here. Yeah, so uh, first of all, uh, for the, my viewers that might not know who you are, can you uh, introduce yourself quickly and uh, give us an idea of how you got into Dash and in cryptocurrency in general, and how as an American you find yourself in Latin America? Hmm. Sure, yeah. I've, uh, my name is George Donnelly. I live in Medellin, Colombia. I'm originally from Philadelphia in the United States. I have uh, lived outside the U.S. for quite a few years now. I am a bit of a libertarian. And uh, that's how I got into uh, Bitcoin. Just a couple of years after it came out, I ran uh, an early conference, an online unconference, where we had some talks about uh, Bitcoin in the early years there. Um, how did I get into Dash? Well, um, you know, the, the, I think all of us know it reached a point where in the early days with Bitcoin, I, I always looked for ways to spend it because I was totally down with the digital cash uh, vision. And then the block time, or not the block time, the block size uh, debate and all that toxicity. And I just, I just kind of took a break from the ecosystem for a while. And um, around uh, early 2008, 2018, I decided to come back and, um, you know, I checked out all the projects and I just found that Dash was going to be the best place to develop the digital cash vision. Um, and so that's, that's, why, that's why I'm here in Dash, because I want to um, make crypto the digital cash of the world accessible to everyone in constant use, daily use. Um, and Dash is the best coin to realize that vision. Uh, as for uh, me being here in Latin America, I have about 25 years experience here. Um, I came here the first time kind of just for fun. Uh, my, my landlord in Chicago, after I graduated from the University of Chicago, said, uh, hey, you got to come and visit. You got to get to know this place. So uh, that was a year after uh, Pablo Escobar died. And I just love it here. It's just a beautiful place. There's an entrepreneurial vibe. Uh, the people are, are warm and welcoming. The mountains are beautiful. Uh, it's just, it's a very interesting place here in Medellin, Colombia. Okay, so I, I know you're from the Discord and uh, I see you're very busy there with uh, Dash Latam. You have a proposal in front of the network. Uh, you've been uh, funded many times. Uh, can you uh, give us a sense of uh, what Dash Latam is, uh, what their aims are and what you've accomplished up to this point? Sure. So Dash Latam, we are, uh, first and foremost, we got started as uh, a, a project to add merchants, to sign up merchants to accept Dash and build the, the, you know, the ability to spend Dash uh, at, at most anywhere, you know. And so uh, today we have uh, more than 1,100 active uh, Dash merchants. Uh, we've lost a few along the way, but frankly, not that many. Um, uh, we go to great lengths to verify them, to support them. Uh, we create educational materials. And then over the last few months, we came up working with uh, Dash Retail. Ash and Alex, we came up with the uh, tracker. We've been doing consumer adoption uh, work. Um, I think that we have probably done 120 or 150 events uh, just this year where we teach people about Dash, we give them the experience. 
And so uh, on our tracker, uh, we now have are showing between 40 and 45 transactions per day on average at uh, tracker.pagacondash.com. And uh, also recently we got into remittances. And really uh, now that we are, we have uh, presences in uh, Colombia, Venezuela, uh, Brazil, Ecuador, Peru, Trinidad, Guatemala, and Spain. Now we really have the kind of network of, of usability options, relationships, uh, and the ability to, to teach and to sell so that we are working on an international remittances network um, because uh, remittance inflows into the developing world are huge. And uh, fees are 8 to 20%. And so I think this is really the, the, big, um, the big opportunity uh, for Dash um, to serve as uh, kind of a, a the, because also the, another benefit is, you know, if people remit Dash home, then when we have our merchants, and whatnot, they can spend it immediately. And so that reduces their, their cost, their remittance cost even further. And that gives merchants a reason to come on board with us. And we can work on next level things such as getting the Dash to continue circulating among merchants so that it really never exits to, to an exchange. Yeah, that's, uh, the, that's the, the big goal. Keep it uh, the circular system so the Dash keeps going around. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's where we are. We're, we've been working very hard on that. Uh, we are, um, I would say we are making progress. We are teaching, we, right now, one of the, uh, the most interesting projects we have going is called Dash Aid. Uh, and we are enabling, due to the crisis in Venezuela, uh, there are, there's a lot of need there. And we can uh, establish a big PR win for Dash by having a direct giving a uh, platform where any uh, NGO or charitable organization or even just an individual can go to the platform, can upload their proposal, their video, and anyone anywhere can donate Dash to them. And they can receive it immediately and then use it to help people. And so this is something that we uh, expect to be able to, to soft launch in the first few days of October. Okay, uh, so you started off in Colombia, and uh, as most people know, the country next to there, uh, Venezuela, is uh, going through a lot of financial hardships and uh, political issues. Uh, you, I guess you have like a kind of a setup on the border, like on the Cucada, I think the name of the city is. Uh, can you explain like a little bit about what, what's happening there and uh, the relation between Colombia and Venezuela? Sure. So, um, yes, right on the border of uh, uh, Colombia and Venezuela, there's a city called Cucuta, and um, uh, at, at certain times, you know, the, the flows range, um, but at certain times, as many as 50,000 people are crossing the border from Venezuela into Cucuta every day. And the great majority of them, a lot of them are moving on. They're, they're leaving Venezuela, but the great majority of them cross the bridge in order to shop in Colombia because in Venezuela, um, there, there's just shortages of everything. Uh, and of course, the law and order situation is, is very dire. It's very easy for shipments to get stolen. So there's a real opportunity here because people will cross the border from Venezuela into Cucuta carrying either bolivars, which are very hard to exchange on the Colombia side, and you get, you get a very bad rate, or they manage to get physical dollars. Um, which also actually dollars are cheap in Colombia, so they they lose there as well. But also because of the the border guards are have turned into effectively a band of thieves, uh, they routinely steal people's money as they cross the border. And so it's it's a question of life and death, and it's a question of well, here's a great opportunity for Dash. Because now what we've started to do is on the, um, on the Venezuela side in the state of Tachira, mostly in the city of San Cristobal, uh, we sell uh, Dash and then uh, the people cross the border with their Dash. And of course, the border guards are not, not hip to that. They're, they're not up on that. And they, then they spend their Dash at our more than uh, 120 active merchants in the city of Cucuta, including many uh, basic necessities merchants. And, and they get the full rate 
you know? And so they save enormous amounts of money, stress, time, you know, and they're able to, uh, to materially improve their life situation. Uh, how many merchants do you think are on the border there right now in Kupta? Uh, well, let's see. On, on the Kukuta side, we have about 120 uh, that are verified active. And on the uh, San Cristobal, the Venezuela side, we have 61 that are verified active. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, so how did uh, something that started in Colombia, how did your organization grow to include other countries in Latin America? Well, um, you know, I've, I've, I think we've always known that uh, Dash crosses borders as if they didn't exist. The ability for Dash to cross borders without uh, paying uh, fees and currency exchange rates and all that is one of our killer use cases. And so as we built up here in Colombia, we realized that limiting ourselves to national borders was kind of... Uh, you know, fighting with two hands tied behind our back. And so we started looking for relationships, uh, to build relationships in other countries so that we could uh, foment that, that cross-border trade. And, and we came across remittances. And as we researched further, we realized the remittance market globally is huge. In particular, the inflows into Venezuela because 4 million Venezuelans have left the country. And they, many have left loved ones behind, children, old people. And there are people here in Colombia who came from rural areas in Venezuela, and they're not well educated. And they go out and every day they sell uh, popsicles on the street. And any $5 that they're able to get together, they send it back home uh, in order to take care of their children and, and their parents and whatnot. But the fees, the fees are a bit onerous at times. And so there's a real opportunity, also the delays and the fraud, because it's, it's a bit of an informal industry. Uh, and so it's a real opportunity for some people to rip off other people. And so there's a real use case for Dash there. And we decided uh, that that was a really nice fit with all the merchants. Um, and so that we've, we've been developing it from there. Okay, just so for my viewers who might be new to the channel and wondering uh, why Dash is good for uh, remittances, can you go in to explain a little bit? Sure. Well, uh, first off, if you Dash doesn't recognize national borders. If you want to send a dollar from your bank account to uh, Colombia, well, I mean, you have to pay bank transfer fees. You have to uh, uh, pay uh, what may be an unfavorable exchange rate. You're going to have to deal with banking regulations on both sides, which may limit the amounts or the frequency. Whereas Dash just doesn't even notice. You, you send from one Dash wallet to another. It's like internet money, you know? It's like you, you can load your Gmail no matter where you are. And it's the same with Dash. So you don't lose all that money or that time or experience all that hassle. Second, um, Dash it settles instantly. So you don't have to wait. For example, if you want to use another crypto, uh, it's, you may have to wait an hour or more. You know, you, you buy it, you got to wait an hour for it to, to fully confirm. You want to send it, you got to wait another hour for it to fully confirm. And then on the other end, they have to sell it because other cryptos don't have the merchant adoption necessary such that you can go somewhere and actually spend it. So all these delays and the fees inherent in, in, in entering and exit crypto are, are an obstacle. But with Dash, you can get into it rapidly because the, the, the payments settle instantly. You can send it and it, it settles instantly across borders, across the globe. And the other person has the money. Also, the fees with Dash are so low that if somebody in, in Caracas says, oh, geez, I need, a, I need a new pair of glasses or I need a new bus pass. It's 20 bucks. Oh, well, I'm not going to send 20 bucks by Western Union or my bank account. That doesn't make sense. You're going to have to wait. But with Dash, oh, 20 bucks. Psh, there you go. What was the fee? Maybe a penny. It's not even noticeable. And it arrives immediately. And because we have so many active Dash merchants in Latin America, people can go direct to those merchants and spend that, that Dash paying the most minimal fees, perhaps a penny or, or, or even less. 
and therefore people keep more of their money and and they can use it more rapidly with fewer delays it's just dash is just fluid so can you go over like a, a typical day of one of your uh, employees and uh when they're going out on the street uh, how do they approach mer merchants and uh, what's the procedure from there sure um and actually we have on our youtube channel uh which is called dash latam we have a bunch of uh, vlogs of people showing off their uh, members of the team showing off their daily routines. But for example, with merchant adoption, we have, we establish certain zones because we work a concentration strategy. We don't want to have one merchant here and five miles away another one. That, that's not a recipe for success. And so we'll have a zone of maybe four to 10 blocks and then so the, the salesman has a flyer, he has a card, uh, he has an acceptance sticker, and a couple other things. And he'll go in and ask, you know, is, is the owner available? Is the, um, is the administrator available? You know, and so if, if, if I'm able to get one of those, I'll say, you know, or if I need to do some persuading, I'll, we'll say, uh, well, we have an opportunity. Are, are you interested in new customers, right? So that when we get before the owner or whatnot, and we sit down and we say, well, Dash is, is digital cash. Uh, Dash is, is here. Uh, it's active in, uh, in this city. Uh, every week, uh, we are training new users. New users are buying Dash. New, we're, we're giving away a little bit of Dash. Uh, Dash is the new, the future of payments. Um, and we, would, we are looking for a few select uh, merchants who would like to receive Dash. Uh, and work with us as allies at the on the ground floor of this thing, and we will send you customers. We'll do our best to send you customers, and we can grow together. And that is basically the pitch. Um, and those who accept, we will go through the installing the wallet. We'll send them a micro payment so they can experience what it's like to send and receive payments. We'll set up the point of sale software, which is just a, a web page. Uh, pos.pagacondash.com, which was actually, uh, it's based on the Spark uh, POS, which was DAO funded thanks to Codex and others. Yep. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll install a little sticker that tells them how to contact us if they have a problem. And then they start, and then we subscribe them to our mailing list and they start getting special emails that start uh, teaching them the basics of Dash uh, on a more expanded level. Um, and that's, that's how we do merchants. Okay. It's kind of hard when we're first starting out because, uh, there's, I, I, I watched the documentary a while back when, uh, somebody was going into Venezuela and they were trying to go to merchants and, uh, somebody said, well, I don't have my phone with me, so you can't really uh, buy anything right now. It's not a really good user experience. Um, what kind of quality controls does uh, Dash Latam have uh, for somebody like me? Like, say, if I come to Venezuela and I want to be assured that I can spend my Dash at these merchants, uh, what kind of uh, procedure do you have there? So uh, once, once we have a whole series of procedures for signing up the merchant and to ensure we have all the information and whatnot, and once that's done, the user uploads, or not the user, the, the, the salesman uploads the information to our CRM, to our database, and from there, we have a verification team, which will either, um, either visit or call uh, to verify, to just verify all the data, and also to deliver a printed QR code, what we call an outlador, which is like a point of sale marketing for Dash also. Um, and from there, we make attempts to, um, to, to, to visit either a member of the team or uh, we're working on a, a, like a, a program where we incentivize um, power users or you know, some of our more dedicated uh, Dash uh, consumers to visit. Um, we will offer uh, to, to market them or to do a promotion, like a discount. Um, and, and we may do an event nearby. And so we do all these, these series. We also some, we have like private meetups too, just for members of the team. And we direct those to, to these different places also. And so we try to verify it a few different times. At the end of the day, um, sometimes it, there are situations like this because we're dealing with Latin America with small business. 
And even in, in the United States, small business is frequently in flux. Uh, and so um, in Colombia, we see it less, but in Venezuela, yeah. I mean, sometimes uh, we say, well, where can, do you have a device for the business, you know, like a tablet or something where we can install the, the POS, you know, the POS. And they say, no, I only have my personal phone. So we, we do the best we can with what's available. Mm -hmm. Of course, merchants are not the only thing we do. You know, we also do uh, remittances, consumer adoption, ambassadorship and whatnot. But with merchants, it's, it's always, they're, they're always, there's always the potential for, uh, for inconvenience like that. So how do you find it's working out on the ground? Like when you have a zone like this with a whole bunch of businesses, I'm sure you have people that go and check how the results are happening. Like, do you, do you see a lot of transactions or is it growing over time or what's the, what's the climate like on the ground there? I would say, yes, it is growing over time. Um, that said, we have to put a considerable amount of marketing and education in, in order to keep it going uh, because people are, um, they are accustomed to just dealing with fiat. Uh, we're essentially changing habits. Uh, that said, we've had several uh, Dash uh, enthusiasts from outside Colombia um, uh, visit us, and um, they have made it their uh, you know their mission to go around and test all these places and and spend as much Dash as they can and kind of have that Dash experience. And along the way, I would say that it has been um, 75 to 80% flawless. Uh, they have, like, uh, for example, um, there's a gentleman from Europe who's here uh, right now. And the other day, he's, he went to visit a coffee shop. Uh, and he said, ah, George, they, they lost their wallet or something. You know. And so right away, I dispatched uh, Angel, who's one of our top salespeople. And he got their, them to, to restore their wallet from the uh, recovery uh, card uh, that we supply them and got them to reinstall the, the uh, point of sale software. And then they were good to go again. How, what, what kind of percentage of your uh, merchants do you think have a standalone point of sale system versus the ones that have just, like, say, my cell phone type of thing? I would say uh, probably about 60%. Uh, have some kind of computer device dedicated to the business, whether it's a, a laptop uh, that's always there or a desktop or, or a tablet. Those are the most common devices. Okay. That's, that's, that's not bad. 60%. I would have thought it would be a lot less than that. It's pretty good. Yeah. We're, we're hoping in the future to, to have some kind of program to incentivize more. Uh, and we were looking at maybe buying some really cheap uh, devices uh, from China and then either selling them or leasing them. Um, but yeah, it's, we, we build with what we have. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, going to be slow at the beginning. Uh, I, I know about all the challenges about trying to get people to <laughs> get into Dash because it's a new technology and it's scary and everything else, magic internet money. So it's uh, hard to convince people. But uh, I guess once you get the... You know, once you get the foundation, then you're uh, you're good to go. You know, and I, and I like I said, I was saying to you before the broadcast, I, I find that uh, you're very results oriented. Like I see you on the Discord, you're pushing the developers. You know, this is what's happening. We got to get the Android and iOS wallets together because they're not communicating properly, the exchange rates and everything. So, yeah. But do you have any co like uh, comments for the Dash community itself and uh, how we should be more uh, meticulous in trying to get Dash adopted out there? Um, well, I would say just try to spend it, you know, uh, one simple thing is just to make sure you have a mobile wallet with you with, a some dash balance and, and just ask, do you accept dash? We, we do that all the time here. We'll walk by a business or, or even it happens organically a lot when we, uh, when we give out a little bit of dash, people will just walk around to the neighboring business and say, do you accept dash? And then they're kind of like, uh, and then the people leave. <laughs> and so it's an object illustration in what they're missing out on. And that's really the lever that we have in terms of merchant adoption is that, well, if, I mean, if you don't want to join us, that's fine, but you're missing out, you know? And so we need to create that, that sense of missing out. And I think we can do that by saying, hey, 
do you accept ash yet you know yeah and also one thing that i do i don't know if you do this but when I, whenever i go to a restaurant i uh and, and i'm going to tip my server i'm going to tip her half in dash or him half in dash because uh, they usually say okay well i'm going to get a tip anyways right so at least i might try this new technology and i show them the dash wallet and they're like whoa you can't believe you just transferred me all that that money in like two minutes two seconds right <laughs> so it's like wow yeah so that's something i do um i think so, that's a solid tactic yeah definitely so what do you guys have in store for uh, Dash Latam uh, coming up in the future? Well, uh, currently we're working towards uh, 60 transactions per day on average, uh, which you can see at our tracker, uh, tracker.pagafundash.com. Um, we want to get to 2,000 active uh, merchants, um, let's see, by the end of November. And we have all of our normal operations, but I would say our number one focus now is on building that uh, LATAM uh, remittances network. Um, there are a lot of liquidity providers now. You know, if you look at, say, like South uh, Florida or uh, Spain, there are a lot of different ways now to buy Dash. And so we would like, we are working uh, on using um, kind of targeted advertising to uh, get people to to buy dash there and then send dash home you know and um i think that's that's really where because and then when people have dash uh we need a way we're working on a way to incentivize those people to then take it to new merchants and get those merchants signed up we already have a large freelancer program where we uh pay people on a results basis to affiliate new merchants we train and then we pay and whatnot. Um, and so I think that as we systematize that, uh, you know, and then so somebody in South Florida wants to send uh, $500 using Dash to their family in Bolivia, and then the guy in Bolivia receives it, and then we get the message to him, hey, here's $500. You want it to turn into 510? Sign up a merchant, you know? Um, and so we develop all those incentives. We take advantage of the existing liquidity network. And we can, this is a huge market. This is more than $500 billion uh, annually. And we can, um, we can really move a lot of Dash. We can sell a lot of Dash that way. For sure, yeah. It's, uh, it's really something that uh, Western Union is probably watching out of the corner of their eyes. You know, like we're so small right now, but we do have the potential to just explode once people understand how, what this technology does and what its uh, usefulness is. Yeah, and then, I mean, they can concretely save money compared to uh, the users. The end users can concretely save money and time uh, by using Dash for remittances. So. You guys must have been excited when uh, we just got the news that uh, Coinbase Pro is accepting Dash because uh, that's, that's oh, a, an, an easy one for Americans to get a hold of Dash and uh, send it to uh, Latin America. Oh, yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah, we, we already have tutorial media uh, made for Uphold, CoinCola, Local Coin Swap, and another one. But I, I asked uh, the, the media team to, to get Coinbase Pro on there right away. That's, nice. that's going to be huge. I'll uh, link to those in the description below. Okay. So is, awesome. is, there, is there anything else that uh, you might want to say before we let you go? Uh, well, uh, I think that we're, we're committed to building real use for Dash. Uh, we're making progress. And I think that this can really help move the price. Uh, and, and, and this project, the, remitt the remittances uh, thing, is, is connected to a larger vision. Uh, that I'll be publishing in the next few days at dash.ist. Also, keep a lookout for some Dash challenge videos uh, coming out in the next few days. I don't know if I don't know if you saw this, Tao, but the Box Mining did a video about trying to spend uh, Zcash in Bangkok. Did you catch that? I haven't seen it yet. No. It, it was a fail fest. It was a <laughs> fail fest. And at the end of the day, he said that um, basically what he was doing was selling the z coin and then the merchant was receiving cash uh you know fiat so it wasn't e it's not even real adoption so we're gonna do a couple of videos like that but real dash adoption uh medellin and caracas will be coming out next week so hmm. keep an eye out for that actually you just reminded me there I, I was gonna say that was the last question but it's not but how, how do you uh convince a, a merchant to actually want to keep the dash instead of selling it for usd or local currency 
that's yeah, that's a tough nut to crack. Uh, we some of them just just hold it. I they they wouldn't sell it to me if I if I begged them. Um, they understand. They've gotten the point. Others sell uh, in the first few payments. They sell it immediately because they just want to see if it really works. Um, and then others, over time, we send them videos because we're always producing new media. We're always teaching. Uh, and over time, I think some of them get the idea a little bit more. Uh, but some of them are, are just about like having the fiat in their pocket because that's what they've always been with. And, you know, so we're working on it for sure, though. Awesome. So I look forward to the day when I come down to uh, South America and uh, try one of the merchants that have been set up by Dash Latam. I wish you guys yeah, all you the, should come down. Yeah, I wish you guys all the best of luck in the future and I uh, hope everything goes well with that. And uh, we're going to make Dash uh, all, in use all around the world because it's a digital cash. It's a digital alternative to cash, like I keep saying on the show. So uh, I wish you the best of luck. Absolutely. Thank you, Tao. Thanks best for coming on. You as well. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Okay. That was my talk with George Donnelly of Dash Latam. Hope you enjoyed it. That's it for me today. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and click the bell if you want to see more from me and Cash Alternative TV episodes. Until next time, remember, Dash is the digital alternative to cash and becoming more so every day. Bye for now.